It's officially been four years since Apple's M1 MacBook Air has been released, and now we have the M5 MacBook Pro. So how much better has Apple Silicon gotten in those years? And I know you're gonna say this is a crazy comparison because we're comparing a MacBook Air versus a MacBook Pro, but millions of people upgraded to the legendary M1 Air. So is it finally time for you to upgrade to the M5 MacBook Pro? Well. We're gonna find out in this video by comparing everything, including the designs, displays, the tech, the ports, the benchmarks, and yes, the battery life, because both of these are at 100% battery, so I'm gonna unplug them. And by the way, the battery capacity on this Air is still 99%. Jumping right into the design, you can obviously see that the new M5 MacBook Pro looks very modern. It looks so much better than the old MacBook Air, especially the display. You have these really nice thin bezels. You have the notch, which people are now used to. They don't really mind compared to this really old school design with the thick bezels all the way around. The M5 MacBook Pro has a wider and larger trackpad. Looking from the side, the MacBook Air is definitely thinner. It has that nice and thin look. But when you look at the port selection, you only have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side and a headphone jack on the right. Compared to the new M5 MacBook Pro, this has MagSafe 3, which is so much more convenient for charging, leaving you extra ports, two on the side. Those are Thunderbolt 4 ports. You also get an additional one on the right side, as well as HDMI, which is very handy, and an SD card slot. But the biggest difference is in the display technology. This uses an old LCD panel with very low maximum brightness compared to this super nice mini LED, which looks a lot brighter. It can actually get up to a thousand nits out in the sunlight, up to 1600 nits peak when watching HDR content. So everything you watch on this looks absolutely amazing compared to the old and really gray looking LCD display on the M1 MacBook Air. And then another huge deal for the display is the 120 Hertz ProMotion that the M5 MacBook Pro has. That means it has a refresh rate of up to 120 Hertz. That means if you're playing games, you get up to 120 FPS. Everything just feels smooth, swiping through everything. Now there's also a difference in the webcam. We have the new 12 megapixel center stage, which means if I move around, the camera will crop in and follow me. And here we are on the M1 MacBook Air. This is the old 720p webcam. You can tell that it looks a lot more grainy, noisy, and also let me know if you hear a difference in the microphones down in the comment section below. Now let's also test the speakers because the MacBook Pro has a really nice six speaker system compared to these old speakers in the MacBook Air. Smokes, guys, the difference is absolutely insane. It's so much louder, it's so much more full. You have all of those frequencies just separated nicely. You have actual bass compared to basically no bass on the M1 MacBook Air. But now let's get into performance, starting with Geekbench 6. You can see that the M1 MacBook Air came with eight gigs of RAM. Now we're getting 16 gigs standard, which is nice for multitasking and just keeping stuff open, keeping stuff snappy. You can see the M5 chip is clocked at 4.61 gigahertz compared to 3.2. Let's run the CPU benchmark to see the difference. There you go, we have our scores. This is insane. The new M5 is 83% faster in terms of single core. Everything you do on your Mac, web browsing, opening up apps, everything relies on that single core. And then moving over to multi-core, holy moly guys, 2.05 times faster on the M5, almost 18,000 points compared to 8,700. That's gonna matter for all of those heavy duty apps. And speaking of web browsing, there's actually a web browsing benchmark. This is speedometer 3.1. And there you go, 74% higher score on the M5. 60, which I think is the highest score ever achieved by any computer. Basically, this 
is gonna be a lot more snappy for everything that relies on the web. Now, speaking of productivity, this little awesome tech gadget, this e-ink dashboard from Terminal, is an absolute game changer for us in the office because we used to have to write down all of our brand deals and sponsored integrations, including this one, down on our whiteboard, which was very time consuming and annoying. But now, using the Terminal website, we created a proper to-do list that's viewed on this seven and a half inch EPD one bit display that we can both see so now we no longer have to pick up a marker again. On top of that, it's even more useful because you have 78 first party plugins and hundreds of plugins that others have already created. You can even make your very own customized plugin for your needs. And I've gotta say the terminal has solved a massive problem in our office, but it's not limited to that because you can use it in your house to display things like your calendars, stocks, or even grocery lists getting updated every time you add something to your phone. And the best part is that depending on the display refresh rate, you can get anywhere from 30 days all the way to 400 days of battery life on a single charge since it only uses battery power when it turns on to refresh and that's it. So go ahead and order yours today using the links in the description and pinned comment below. Now moving over to the graphics side of the Geekbench benchmark, let's go ahead and run that right now. By the way, you can see this is the M1 with seven cores. That's the base bend model versus 10 cores on the M5. And dang, look at that score, 2.5 times higher in terms of metal graphics, even though it only has 43% more cores, 10 versus seven, those cores are much, much faster on the M5. And then in terms of web design, we have Figma, which is gonna give you a real world look at how web-based apps will perform. This is a project provided to us from our partner 500 Designs, one of the best studios based out of California. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to export 12 of these layers right here and see the difference in speed. Oh, can you believe it? A minute and 36 seconds on the M5, about a minute faster than the M1 MacBook Air. That's the real world difference you're gonna feel if you actually upgrade. Things like this are gonna happen a lot faster. Now before we move on to some graphics tests, I do wanna check out the SSD speed because Apple did make it a lot faster on this new M5 model. By the way, we have a 512 gig model right here and a 256 on the M1. And take a look at that in terms of the read speeds, over twice as fast, so that's gonna matter for everything, just loading through apps, opening apps, transferring stuff back and forth, and then look at the write speed, almost three times faster, about two and a half times faster on the new M5. That's gonna also make your MacBook feel a lot more quick and snappy and responsive. Now getting into a real world gaming benchmark, we have 3D Mark's Steel Nomad Lite Unlimited. This is essentially gonna show us the difference in FPS for gamers. And holy moly guys, 13.4 FPS on the M1 compared to 39.3, that is three times faster gaming performance that is absolutely insane. And don't forget that you have the 120 hertz display on the M5 MacBook Pro, which means in some games you could actually play at those frame rates, like let's say League of Legends, that is a great game and you can get an enjoyable experience with the M5. Now Apple really upgraded the graphics cores on the M5, they added new third generation ray tracing cores as well. So let's test Solar Bay Extreme Unlimited. This is their latest test from 3D Mark. that's 13.2 times better on the M5. Why? Well, it has dedicated ray tracing cores and they're the latest third gen. This has none of that, no ray tracing cores. Holy moly, that is an absolutely massive, massive difference. And now let's get into exactly that, but in the real world. This is Blender 3D rendering. This is the classic BMW project. And bam, the M5 is finished 14 seconds. By the way, that cycles GPU supported and the M1 is still going. There you go, the M1 is done two minutes and seven seconds compared to 14 on the M4. That means the M1 took nine times longer just to render this classic easy BMW project that is 
quite something. And now we have Logic Pro. This is for music producers out there. This is the Logic Pro benchmark, which essentially runs as many instrumental tracks as it can at the same time before your machine overloads. We're running 80 right now on the M1. We already know that the M5 can run 159. That's the previous high that we got in the previous test that we ran. By the way, you can watch the M5 versus M4 comparison right above if you haven't seen that yet. Overloaded at 84 tracks. It cannot run 84, let's try 83. Looks like 80 is the max on the M1, 159 of the M5, that's essentially two times more tracks without overloading, even though we still have the same number of performance cores, four on the M1 and four on the M5, and that is what it uses for this test. And now let's get into Cinebench 2024. By the way, you can see that you can't run the GPU test because you don't have ray tracing on the M1. And also I'm not gonna do that single core test because it would take way too long on the M1. I'm doing a 10 minute stress test, which is gonna stress all of the cores. Let's go ahead and get started. By the way, I'm gonna open up MX Power Gadget, which you can see is gonna show us the power usage. Looks like we peaked out at 30 watts on the M5 compared to about 16 on the M1. So almost two times more power usage on the M5. You can see the E cores are a lot faster on the M5. 2.96 it was running at compared to 2.06 on the M1, so a lot faster. P cores, look at that. They were running about like 4.2, I think. Now they're running at about four on the M5, compared to only about, what was that, 3.0. Now getting throttled on the M1. Of course, guys, when we're talking about temps, Keep in mind the M5 MacBook Pro has a fan. You can see it running up right there. Let me open up the main window. There you go. The fan is starting to speed up. The M1, of course, is fanless, this MacBook Air. So you can see we are getting so much throttling right there. The clock speeds are going down like crazy. The power is now under 10 watts. Tons of throttling. Meanwhile, the M5, it slowed down a little bit. Now it's slowly starting to kick back up in terms of that wattage and the clock speed for the P cores still over four. So it's pushing it to the limits. Fans are now maxed out on the M5 to keep this thing cool, but we are not seeing the clock speed run at full performance. That means the single fan in the M5 is not enough to keep up. We now need dual fans because this M5 chip is just that fast. And looking at the temps of the chips themselves, we're looking at around 99 degrees Celsius on the M5, but only 92 on the M1, which is weird that it's so much lower. Well, it's likely because the chassis itself is overheating, so it cannot run the chip hotter. And let's actually look at the chassis temperature. This is the FLIR thermal camera. It's been about nine minutes into the test, about one minute left to go. Taking a look at the M5 MacBook Pro at the hottest point, right there in the center of the keyboard, we're seeing about 36 degrees Celsius. And then you can see an even hotter spot right here. Look at that. We're hitting 41 degrees Celsius. That's where the fan, 42 degrees Celsius. That's where the fan is getting rid of all of that heat. Now moving over to the M1, you can see that there is no fans. So all of the heat is stuck right there. Oh, look at that. A lot hotter on the chassis itself. We're looking at 40 degrees Celsius. And the M5 didn't finish on time before the timer ran out. It's actually on pass three right now compared to the M1 is on pass one. It's just about to finish the first render. Well, this is gonna have to do three. And would you look at that? That difference is insane. 1,107 points on the M5 compared to 411 on the M1. That's 2.7 times higher in terms of the multi-core score running at full 100% CPU. And now let's get into photo editing with Lightroom Classic. This is our project that has 50 42 megapixel raw photos. So what we're gonna do is export them. All right, 
That took a long time. Two minutes and 41 seconds on the M1 versus 42 seconds on the M5. Holy moly, that is so much faster. Now, I know some of you guys were asking for some more in-depth photo editing tests, so I opened up the first photo on each, and let's just apply a nice and quick denoise. And there you go, the M1 just finished. It took a minute and 36 seconds on the M1, 44 seconds on the M5. And now jumping into video editing in Final Cut Pro, this is our five minute HEVC project. And there you go, the M1 took two minutes and 21 seconds compared to a minute and 42 seconds. That's the speed of the encoders. And now let's move on to ProRes. This is a five minute timeline of 4K. Let's go ahead and export. All right, wow, that took forever. Six minutes and 39 seconds on the M1. The M5 only took 56 seconds. Can you believe that difference? So now with all of that testing out of the way, let's answer the original question. Is it finally worth upgrading from your four-year-old M1 MacBook Air that served you well, the legend, to the new base M5 MacBook Pro? As you saw, the M1 got absolutely destroyed in every single metric, every single test. And the last thing we gotta look at is the battery life. So before I give you guys my answer, let's look at the battery. We have 53% on the M1, that's after about two hours of heavy duty testing, compared to 56% on the M5. Would you look at that? Can you believe it? The M5 chip was using a lot more power in every single test, especially Cinebench. It had to do it three times while the M1 only had to do it once, and it still won in terms of battery life. That's full CPU performance for three different renders. The display has been at max brightness, so much brighter than the M1, and it still had better battery life. And across all of those features, yes, you're paying more money, but dang, this thing is an absolute beast. So to answer the original question of whether it's finally time to upgrade, yes, I believe so. I believe it's worth it going for that MacBook Pro with the much faster SSDs, two to three times faster, crazy performance boost, especially in terms of ray tracing and graphics. That is just unprecedented. Such a massive difference. It is finally the perfect time to upgrade from the M1 to the M5. And I believe it's actually on sale right now. So I'll have the links down below if you wanna check it out order it on Amazon. Definitely subscribe above for more videos like this one and check out the M5 versus M4 comparison right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.